Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in crypto, and break it down to bite-sized pieces. Today, just the thumbnail suggests there was a hack. Yet again, another DeFi platform gets hacked. We're going to talk about how $120 million was hacked and how it all happened. Also, we're going to take a look at how Cardano or ADA just passed the 20 million transaction mark uh, without uh, having any hiccups as far as shutdowns. Also, we're going to take a look at a, a topic that we covered yesterday that I thought for sure would play out today. And I just, when I saw this, it's all about the traditional markets. I'm like, are we taking crazy pills? And then lastly, we'll talk about some good news, uh, Amazon and their partnership with the cryptocurrency Storm X. So we'll get into all those things. But first, take a look at what's going on in the market. Today, it is Thursday. It's a beautiful day here in Puerto Rico. And this is what we have for the market. Kind of boring. I'll be honest with you. Uh, we've got a market cap of 2.62 trillion, which remember not too long ago, we had a market cap of 2 trillion and everyone was like, excited. Then we went past 3 trillion. Now we go back to 2.6 and people are like, man, this is awful. This sucks. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. And it's been pretty flat. So we'll see how the month plays out. And uh, actually, in all honesty, if you want to get some pretty good information about where the December could potentially go and how to prepare for that, we're going to do our DCA, uh, which we do every week. And uh, for this one, it's uh, it's me, it's uh, Ben from Into the Cryptoverse, Benjamin Cowan, and uh, uh, James from Invest Answers. And we're just going to talk about a couple things that are going on in December, how we see things and where things could potentially go and how to prepare for that. So that'll be uh, tomorrow. That's in uh, 21 hours from now. And I'll, I'll put the link in the description so you can check it out. But uh, you can also find it on Twitter. But as far as uh, the market itself, again, very boring, a little bit sideways. There are some winners today, as there always is. I mean, usually there's like some that'll pop off a little bit. And we take a look. I mean, Bitcoin's at 56, almost 57, yawn, Ethereum. 4,500, eh, all right, which is great, I mean, compared to what it was. Uh, Solana, the last seven days, up 16%, 8% for today, almost hitting that 250. Cardano is up 11% for the day. That's pretty darn good uh, for Cardano and what they're doing. And then Polygon's up as well, 8% uh, for Uniswap and so on and so forth. But pretty much just kind of sideways, except for, man, Elrond took a beating, 14%, ouchie. And uh, that's what's going on in, in the top part. So that's what we have for uh, the actual market. Let's just jump into today's top story because this, it seems like this happens again and again and again and again. We, we, we have a DeFi platform. We have something going out there. Not that it's rushed, not that it's a problem. Well, there was a problem because they just lost 120 million and um, there's problems all over the place. And this is what we have. So Badger DAO protocol suffers 120 million exploit. And not to get too far in the weeds, this is what happened. On Wednesday night, it's Thursday right now, an attacker drained funds from the wallets of dozens of users of the Badger DAO Yield Vault using malicious contract permissions. Blockchain data and security analytics company PeckShield concluded the total loss was 2,100 Bitcoin and 151 ETH. Ouchie. That's a pretty good payday for just a couple of uh, weeks work for those scammers. Speculation in online channels that the hack is the result of an exploit in the badger.com user interface and not in the core protocol contract. So when we're complaining, mostly me complaining, that things aren't moving fast enough, you know, we have to take a step back and go, you know what? There's a reason that things go a little bit slower because if we don't go just fast enough, then we start to break things. And usually the money that's lost, I can tell you right now, a lot of the money that's lost was a lot of people who put their blood, sweat, and tears into this DAO. It wasn't uh, a bunch of people who were probably a part of the project. I'm sure they lost some money too, but the majority probably were people just like you and me. They just want to just put that in there and they, uh, they have trust and it didn't work out. So in all honesty, sometimes we should just take a step back and go, you know what? Okay, it's a little bit slower. I'd like to move faster, but you know, geez, we keep hearing about hacks and this isn't the first one. I mean, just think back of all the different DeFi hacks and just hacks in general that have happened uh, over the last two year. So uh, in this one, I'm like, okay, I get it. So it wasn't even the protocol, it was the interface itself. So users report that while claiming yield farming rewards and interacting with Badger Vaults, they noticed their wall providers prompting spurious requests for additional permission. So they would go in there and then of course, because the user interface scammers well, thieves, let's just call them thieves. Thieves in the background w did something with the actual uh, interface itself and said, oh, we want your, we're going to get your data. They took their data and they ripped everybody off. And there was this one part down here. Uh, it says, uh, 
Uh, though the protocol contracts are paused, community members are advising that depositors use tools like DBank and Unrect to revoke permissions. And I was like, I've never heard of this. So uh, Unrect, you can, it's a smart contract checker. And all you got to do is find in all the addresses you can that can spend your token. So you put the actual smart contract address in and forever where, wherever it went, and you can connect and stop it, which is pretty crazy. I didn't know you could actually do that, but um, that is what we have. So again, I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but uh, sometimes we should go a little bit slower. Speaking of slow, Cardano. So uh, Cardano <laughs> passes the 20 million transaction mark without a single outage in four years. It's a pretty good record. I got to, you know, you got to give it up to them, right? So this is what... Uh, it, that the whole story is right there. And they, they just reiterate the same thing, right? Same thing. But there was this one comment uh, from Charles Hoskinson that I found quite interesting. And he states, uh, what people don't get about Ouroboros is that it's a protocol family that already has the hard stuff figured out. 2022 is about optimizing throughput, transactions per second, and connecting side chains. It's not theory. It's just code from pipelining to input endorsers it's going to be a pretty fun year. So again, when we talk about things that are moving kind of slow, Cardano does that that thing. But in all honesty, it hasn't uh, you know hasn't had uh, issues as far as like shutting down the entire chain. Now, when uh, MimSwap came up uh, to try to do a, a decentralized uh, exchange uh, running off of the Cardano blockchain, did have problems because the way that it integrated the code and it looked like there was some things that weren't optimized. But the actual protocol, the blockchain that is Cardano, uh, never has shut down. There's been other ones that uh, have, and that's uh, that. I'll let you talk all about that in the comment section. Uh, some pretty big ones in the top ten. So when we take a look at what's going on, maybe it's just one of those things where it's just super slow. But I mean, it is what it is. Let me just think about that in the comments. And then uh, let's move on to our next piece, crazy pills. And this is really getting to the crux of, of the root of why I think we're into crypto. I put this out, I had tweeted this, and I said, there's, there's a great story we talked about yesterday where uh, CEOs and insiders, they're selling off billions of personal stock and it's up 30%. So, you know, you have the Jeff Bezos and you have the Elon Musks and, all, and, and the 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 main players and the hierarchy of some very big businesses and they're selling off like crazy. And then the insiders that are part of those corporations are also selling off like crazy. But you have to understand when you have money printing, where does it go first? It doesn't go to you or me. I mean, stimulus package, I suppose, uh, if you're qualified for that. But usually what happens is that uh, when all that money gets printed, it starts off at the top and all those people get all that money and they do whatever they want to and then it filters down to us, the serfs. <laughs> And then we get to do whatever we want with it. But at that point, uh, all the buying power is all the way up here. And then, of course, now that we see that uh, the Fed is, you know, propping up, uh, you know, bonds and, and traditional markets and, and buying up and uh, swaps and things, I mean, they're really propping up everything. And I think the smart money knows it. Like, we better get out. And they're selling everything like crazy. And when I when I heard that, and this is the article, I'll link it uh, as well in the comment section, but or in the description, excuse me. Uh, when I heard this, I'm like, ah, it'll go down. You know, it'll, you know, the market will, will figure that out. Like, like, that's not right. Here we are today. S&P 500 almost up a point. Uh, NASDAQ up a little bit. Dow up over a point. Russell 2000 up 1.53. And the Bitcoin index <clears throat> down almost 2%. And the US dollar index pretty much flat. Amazing. And when I look at this, I just think to myself, it's like that scene in uh, the big short where Michael Burry, he, he's talking about like, well, you know, things should go down because, you know, this this can't be correct and, and th there's no way that this could happen to the government. And then he finally concludes, he goes, maybe the government's just corrupt because you know, everything should be collapsing and it's not. And the Fed is propping up everything and it's the same type of thing here. I don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but it just seems very odd that we have this many problems and, uh, you know, these CEOs, which I have no problems with them selling, but they're selling like crazy. And then, you know, if you see like in the crypto market, people sell off like that, you, the market is colla not collapses, but we, we see a dip. And of course, over here, what do we see? Mania. So I just find it odd. Let me just think about that story and where you think we're going. And then to finish up, uh, friends of the show, 
Simon Yu and Stormex, they could just landed a big, massive deal. And I want to say congratulations to those guys have been around for years. I think they've been around since 2015, 2016, and they've just been grinding the whole time. So StormX, you get up to 8% crypto cash back with the StormX debit card. And uh, just says here, hey, with our US debit card rollout, plan for Q1 2022, right around the corner. Are you usually able to shop and earn up a whopping 8% on Amazon? I shop on Amazon. I also have StormX and the app. I will be using this because I like to get cash back or crypto back. Apart from being able to spend and earn up to 15% over 15,000 physical storms, StormX debit card users can still benefit from utilizing their debit cards while shopping online. So you can go check that out over at the, the StormX uh, website. Very easy to do. If you're gonna download anything, go to the official website. So I'll link it in the uh, description. And then also, um, I'm gonna link this as well. This was this was me and, man, remember the pool? Ah, the pool was great. Remember the headphones? I used to wear just headphones to do interviews. This was back in April. Uh, and it was me and Simon just talking about where StormX could potentially go. <laughs> It's funny how at times just, man, they just fly by. And uh, now here we are. So I think it's going to be big. Uh, hopefully it's, uh, it works all out. And uh, I just want to say congrats to the team over there at StormX. And that's it. So look, a little bit short today. A lot of things going on. But I want to say thanks for sticking with me. Uh, if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. I'll consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that's it. And also, uh, if you're so inclined to, uh, join us tomorrow live for the DCA show. Link's in the description. And that's it. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. See you in the next one.